Hey, the episode you're about to hear was intended to be aired last week and was recorded a few days before, so all the political opinions and news you're about to hear are a little bit out of date. We'll be back with up-to-date news coverage next week, so make sure to check back in for that. Now, back to the show. Election season is in full swing, and with the vote fast approaching, it's time to talk the issues. This is the political edition of What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Um, It's going to be a little bit different than our usual editions. I think we're going to jump kind of over the place. We're going to talk about the candidates, talk about the debates that just happened, maybe talk about some of their issues, scandals. We should probably start at the beginning. Um, We haven't had a political episode out for a while, and a lot has happened since the last time we went on the air. Well, first of all, the main difference is that now the debates are happening. Yes. And historically, the debates, some people can say that the debates have changed elections. They've decided the vote. And so I think just from watching the debates and seeing the polls after the debates, I would I would concur with that. I think the debates are really changing how people view the candidates. Because yeah. on, on a certain level, this is really the first time that they people have seen the candidates uh, talk in front of crowds. Yes, I, I think it's been very, it's been very clear in Hillary Clinton's campaign she hasn't done a lot of public like she she hasn't done a crazy amount of public speaking she hasn't been super super out there she hasn't been doing a whole lot of press events now she's finally coming out at this big event with a lot of press and it's the their candidates are really we're starting to see where they stand well kind of just expanding on that I think it's Donald Trump's thing to bring in large crowds of 10,000 people and fill up stadium uh, football ball fields but now it's hillary clinton's thing as well because yeah the, the polls are definitive as, as much as as much as donald trump has been saying that he won the first debate and i'm sure he's going to say he won the second but it hasn't yeah. been long enough for for me to say that uh since since the time we recorded mm-hmm. it in the debate but definitively the polls m- most scientific polls at least are showing that hillary clinton won and people saw that she does a better job at least in that specific circumstance at pleasing crowd and w- what was interesting if, if i can harken back to the first debate here we're sort of gonna try to go through through most of the the debates that have happened so far. Um, In in the first debate, the thing that really caught me about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, and in the moment, I wasn't sure who would end up rising in the polls from this, Hillary Clinton was very reserved, and she spoke basically when it was her turn. There were a few exceptions, but she basically spoke in turn, tried to be as... She tried to be as presidential as possible, I guess you could say. She tried to really poise herself, um, whereas Trump... Trump was pretty often interrupting Hillary Clinton with things like he would often say wrong uh, when he thought differently on a fact she was stating. Um, and it, it was it was this really interesting dynamic where Hillary Clinton and Trump were sort of playing off each other. Trump sort of being big and bombastic and trying to trying to interrupt Hillary Clinton to dispute facts, whereas Hillary Clinton seemed to sit back a little bit more. She would she was get, very reserved. Yeah, she, and I think that's that's more. Of her just trying to be consistent with the uh, with the personality mm-hmm. and attitude that she's wanted people to believe for for years now, or I guess months since the political season started. Yeah, she 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 wants to be seen at least from what from what I've been seeing from her campaign, she wants to be seen as the competent candidate. Because well, yes, both candidates have their controversies and scandals, yeah. but she wants to be seen in in my view. I think she wants to be seen as even though she has scandals and controversies, she has a strong temperament she she doesn't she doesn't just yell at people make make latent <laughs> insults to yeah. uh to other people on stage unlike Donald Trump which which I've seen the Republican debate he definitely made more insults and definitely uh called people out much more especially Jeb Bush yeah. by the way than than these latest debates so it's interesting to see that Donald Trump has shifted in that direction but I don't think Hillary Clinton has shifted much from the Democratic debates because no. she is more, she wants to look consistent and precise and presidential. And Donald Trump, he's trying to emulate that in a sense, but he's not quite there. Yeah. I, I think what's really been interesting as the debates have coming up, have been coming up, is um, the weeks before the first debate, I was noticing a shift in Donald Trump's campaign 
campaign he, before he had been speaking to his supporters and he had been really i mean at least before his nomination he was really doubling down on a lot of a, a, a lot of like build build a wall things like that you know and that's really to be expected I, yeah when he's in the primaries he's only appealing to republicans but once he he sort of it became clear to trump that okay this is something that can actually happen he started pulling back on a lot of his on a lot of his stronger statements for example build a wall makes almost no appearances in any of his speech anymore i can't remember the last time i've heard him say that yeah but you know what's interesting i think even though he's trying to do that he's trying to get rid of uh this idea that he's you know like he's he builds walls there was that whole controversy with the mm -hmm. pope saying that someone's not a true christian if they build walls instead someone's a true christian if they build bridges and i think i think maybe there's some of that in in the sense that he wants to appeal to the wider audience yeah but i also think it's interesting that he really hasn't shifted his views that much he For, shifted how he talks about them he, he shifted how he talks about them and i guess we could probably get into this later but in his recent apology video you know maybe we could yeah. get into the tape but in his recent apology video he apologizes and then he immediately starts talking about immigration and uh people who have been affected by policies yeah. of obama and it's he's... almost the exact same rhetoric that he's been expressing yeah. throughout his entire campaign and i i i don't know why that is well but... i feel like to me he's on message to a fault he's he's been pushing a narrative for a for a very long time in his campaign he he's been very very strongly anti-immigration but it seems to me that once he has to change sort of who he's talking to he really almost changes his message because i i recall um donald trump was speaking about immigration and a really Really interestingly, I heard him start talking about immigrants' children, which is, if you're talking about build a wall, get them out, get them out, that's not something you generally want to be bringing up. So he he started this, oh, think about the children, oh, we can't separate people's families, maybe we should just do semi-strict immigration, maybe we shouldn't build a wall, and it, it's... I, th I think that was more of a thing for September. I yeah. think in, in September he was criticized by the media for changing his views on immigration. He was he was basically not being as strict as before. But what I'm talking about is even though he's changed some of the words he says, his overall direction and strategy for his campaign hasn't changed. Oh yes, and, yes. and what I'm what I'm saying is that he he won the primaries in part because of his strong focus on things like immigration and uh, and trade and ISIS. Those those are some of his three main points, and they still are, they still are his three main points. So I don't I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but I think in order to appeal to the more general public, I don't think the av I mean. I guess I'm just guessing here, but I don't think the average person really cares that much at all about immigration, trade, and ISIS. I think they, they have like a passing uh, idea of, of caring about it. But those types of things are, are not even societal issues that affect people unless you're right on the border yeah. or, or things. Uh, so, uh, so for him to make that as his, as his main argument, I'm not sure that's going to do a, a good job appealing to the general audience. No... <sighs> Something I feel Donald Trump has missed when uh, crafting his campaign is he's missed a lot of centrist voters. Our our country is really partisanly divided right now. I don't have the numbers to back it up. Which I think we talked about this last time yeah. we did talk about politics, but the Pew Research has shown that there are more than ever two distinct political identities you almost completely identify with one or completely identify with the other at times not seen within the last few decades yeah. and obvi obviously i i mean if you're an american you've probably felt this people generally do identify with the left or right or they identify with republican or democrat and even though there are some people that identify in the middle you can broadly categorize yourself as either one of the two. Yeah, I think that's why in this election, the centrist voter has become such a a big draw for... for I, I mean, the centrist voter is such a rare bird now that you really want to be pursuing them. Like, you, you gone pretty much are the days where you can sway uh, a Democrat over to your side or a Republican over to your side... Now we are incredibly partisanly divided. You can pretty much only convince people who aren't convinced already. So 
Donald Trump having such a hardline stance, it, it feels like he he's not going to be able to sway those people in the middle who are undecided. They're going to be seeing Hillary Clinton on one side, sort of being more reserved, seeming more presidential, and they're going to see... I mean, I hate to sling that term, but I can't really think of a better... Poised, maybe. Seeming seeming more poised, more collected. And then they're seeing Donald Trump, who is on message, but it's generally a message about fear or well, something like that. It's something that you'd have to agree with beforehand yeah. in order to align with He's him. He's preaching to the choir, is the issue. He's preaching to his supporters, but he's not going to sway centrist support by continuing to have pretty radical ideas in that way i completely agree with you because imagine if you're someone on the fence would you be convinced by donald trump saying we need to call radical islamic terror by its name why would you personally if you're on the fence and you don't really care about isis or you don't really care about calling them by their name how would that mean anything to to affect you but on the other hand th and this is why i think hillary clinton's strategy is 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 better over these last few weeks, is that if you hear, hear her something, hear her say something during the debate, or you hear how she's uh, more poised, like you said, yeah. then I could see how that could convince you, because that's that's something that would actually mean something to a centrist, rather than just hearing th hearing stock phrases that we've already heard for months. For example, uh, like I just said, with the we should call radical Islamic terror by his name or we should deport these massive immigrants. It's something that you have to agree with beforehand in order for it to convince you. And by then, it's no use. This is the political edition of What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. I think everyone can agree, regardless of what side of the ticket you're on, Donald Trump has not been doing a great job with that block of voters. And a really interesting turn of phrase I heard being used around this, uh, the, the first debate is Hillary Clinton was trying to draw out Twitter Donald Trump. Donald Trump is very famous, uh, at least in this election, for being active on Twitter and sort of calling people out. He, he's, he's not just a passive Twitter account that's tweeting out what we already know. Sometimes news will come from his Twitter account, news about his personal beliefs. He is, he is extremely active on Twitter. He's often bombastic, you know, bombarding people. He's, he's very out there on Twitter. Well, I would, and I would say seems, if you want to know about the real Donald Trump, if you want to know his policies, it's best to follow his Twitter. Mm -hmm. Better than anything I could imagine. Well, that's why Hillary Clinton wanted to draw out Twitter Donald Trump in this debate. Because Donald Trump's policies are pretty are pretty far right most most of the time. And they don't always come across as um sort of radical ideas. Not that uh, radical ideas in the sense that they're pretty far from the centrist viewpoint. Um they don't always come across that way when he's talking about them in a more presidential sense, you know, I, I keep going back to that word, but in a more presidential sense, when he's, when he's using a lot of political phrasing, he, he can sort of turn it into a more centrist sounding idea. But when Hillary Clinton sort of gets under his skin and has him start coming out and making insults and saying wrong, wrong, wrong while she's speaking. The problem is, is for some reason, he keeps these tweets up from years ago and and, you know, do you think it's because if he deletes them, then the media will pick up on the fact that he's deleting these old tweets? For example, the one about well, the Chinese uh, inventing climate change, yeah, saying that it's Biden a man-made hoax. I, why would he... It seems like he would want to delete them for, you know... I mean, at least delete uh, tweets that the media hasn't attacked too much. Okay. For me, looking from Donald Trump, Donald Trump's point of view, he's been he's been really railing on Hillary Clinton for deleting her, her emails. He, he's he been really pouncing on the email scandal, and he's just been going at it over and over and over, really attacking Hillary Clinton on that issue. So if he starts deleting things from his past, all of a sudden he's a hypocrite, and Hillary Clinton can turn that around on him. Oh, I'd, he can, ne I'd never thought of that. Yeah. He can start saying, why don't you show us your deleted emails? Then Hillary Clinton can say, why don't you show us your deleted tweets? And it just totally throws off 
his entire campaign. Because, let's face it, the, really the only way Donald Trump is going to sway uh, strongly centrist voters is by convincing them Hillary Clinton is the wrong choice. Because both candidates this election have historically low approval ratings. Nobody likes these candidates, really. So it's a game of convincing, hey, all right, I may not be your favorite, but look at the other person over there. It, it's become a game of who's worse. It's really become a form of insult slinging, whether it's more poised and talking about, oh, um, you said so-and-so and and being very polite in your responses, very poised, or whether it's by just going straight for the throat and just directly attacking the issues. Both of them are trying to convince America the other one is a bad choice. Which I I think is also an interesting approach, because if they both have historically low approval ratings, it, it feels almost like... Hillary Clinton saying something wrong about Donald Trump or Donald Trump saying something wrong about Hillary Clinton. It it almost just feels like that's mudslinging and everyone knows it. Imagine if there was a candidate up there that didn't say anything about the other person and they just took insults. Don't you think... I mean, I I have this idea that maybe people would be convinced that they aren't actually as bad as they've been hearing because they don't ever engage in the insults in the other direction. Yeah. Although, I, I, think... I mean, I'm sure political elections have never been strictly no. issue based. So I'm it, I'm it, sure the there's tough, I'm, I'm sure there's a good reason why that's true. The hard truth is America doesn't vote based on the facts. I mean, we we our opinions can be swayed based on facts, but usually by the time the debates are happening, we care more about how something feels or whether something sounds right. Most people, after they're done watching the debates, don't go home and look up what they were saying. They don't go home and research. They don't check. <laughs> Which was another interesting thing, because Hillary Clinton, during the first and, and second debate, yeah. she kept saying, go look at the fact checkers. That's what she would say. Because she doesn't she doesn't want to spend that much time debunking things that Donald Trump said, especially given the first debate. Donald Trump would just say, wrong, 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 you're wrong. And so Hillary Clinton can't then say well no you're wrong because then it would it would be like a a childish uh playground argument where they're saying yes it is no it isn't yes it is so hillary clinton was just pleading with people and she was she was saying just go home and look at the fact checkers and uh i think that i think that really speaks to uh she has to ask us to go look at the facts because not that many people are going to do it i think (laughs) I mean, we generally try to present both sides of the issue here, but I think it t- it tells a lot about each person's campaign that hi- that Hillary Clinton her she'll often use the phrase "go look that up" or "I fact I've check it." People criticize like Donald Trump for saying "sources said" or vague things uh, such as that, but Hillary Clinton definitely did the first did the same thing during the first debate. Yes. And that's that's what I was just about to get into. Especially her her tax plan. People, uh, yeah. She she just said people have looked at my tax plan. People have looked at Donald's, and they've said mine is better. And who is convinced by something as empty as that? Saying that people have looked at it. The thing is, Hillary Clinton has been saying let's get fact checkers on that when she knows Donald Trump is wrong because she she. She's not sort of afraid to be pointing people towards fact checkers, but Donald Trump, I think, could have be just as effective if he did the same thing towards Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton generally tells less white lies, in my opinion. You know, she well, she she, she, she generally, generally she generally tells less up in your face um, mistruths. Like sometimes Donald Trump, it's pretty easy to see where he flip-flops he generally likes to speak to his audience well regardless of how weak or stronger arguments are she she knows at least i mean she's at least aware since she's telling us to go look at the fact checker she's aware that everything she says will either be regarded as true or false so even if she makes a bad argument in her mind i think she's saying she's thinking to herself well i definitely should not make a, a lie Right. Yeah. Even if even if the worst thing I should say is something that doesn't make any sense, at least it won't completely be misaligned with reality. And that's that's what's been the really interesting 
dynamic I've seen in the debates. Hillary, Hillary Clinton has been more careful with her words than people might think judging by her campaign against Bernie Sanders or something like that. She she hasn't really said anything in and, in the debates. And it, she I I would say this is unsurprising because she's running against a candidate who openly says he's not politically correct. So in order for her to say that she's the politically correct candidate, she has to do that. She's been so careful with her facts. I, I've seen the fact checkers catch her off guard a few times and shown that some statements she said were false. Which should happen in the heat yeah. of the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone. But she has, looking at the transcripts of the debates, she has a lot more cyclical arguments. She has a lot more words and phrases that don't really say much she gives people a general idea of what she wants to do but she never really says exactly what donald trump is guilty of that as well but he's more open and upfront about it whereas hillary clinton kind of likes to hide it behind words you know and and i've noticed something uh last last time when i watched the republican debates when ted cruz was still on I noticed that he he was very powerful and he was very forceful uh, about the way he debated. I, I mean, the way his persuasive skills were definitely not matched by pretty much anyone on the stage. And I think it really speaks. I think I think presidential debates are a different setting in traditionally in debates. It's the one who's most persuasive that wins. But that's only that's only usually true when you're looking at two people who are putting forth arguments for an idea in this debate. It's two people that are putting forth arguments about why the other candidate is bad, not about just some general idea. And everyone knows that's true. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a different it's definitely a different way of debating in in presidential debates, which which creates the interesting dynamic that that you're yeah. talking about. And by the way, um, we're having this discussion on um, the Monday. On on Monday. Of, this is when it was recorded. Yeah. Yes, when it airs this uh, Saturday, where things will have changed. There, there's going to be some big differences between what we're saying and what's happened. There's going to be some big uh, scandals, probably, and some big news that's going to come out pre- pretty fast in this next few weeks. So, if if we've missed something, it's because we don't know about it yet. And one of the major things I think we said this in the beginning, at least I did was that we're going to see how the polls reacted to the latest Trump leak. Yeah. So we did record this uh, late enough so that we know what that is. But basically, Friday last week, uh, there was a video, and I guess uh, I don't, I don't, I kind of wanted, um, kind of want to say it as it is, kind of like what Trump would say, yeah. but it was, it was basically a video of Trump making lewd comments. And at one point, he stated that he, he is able to sexually assault women with no repercussions because he's rich. Yeah, and it was John McCain, a, a, a whole bunch of other Republicans unendorsed him, and it's it's been basically the defining moment of the last few weeks in the political election. Yes, and I mean it's it's been pretty clear so far that he's been going down in the polls because of it. Well, not yet. There's only been a few days of polls, yeah. so it's it's but hard to say. I think we'll we'll have a more clear picture of it next week when our next episode airs. I think we'll have more definitive statements to say on, for example, how the second debate went or how this Trump scandal has affected his campaign. Because previously, the scandals really haven't put too much of a black mark on his campaign. But now this one may be the one that finally tips the scales. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Scandals for Trump have been, uh, for example, he, he said something that was a lie. Or he said something that didn't make any sense or was nonsensical. But this is the first time in which he says something so obscene that people are redacting or people are withdrawing their their support for him. And so yeah. it's it's definitely it's definitely a different type of scandal. It's almost it's almost like a Clinton controversy. Mm-hmm. It's something that actually makes a difference in her campaign, yeah, rather than uh, rather than before. This may be the email scandal of the Trump campaign. Uh well, we'll we'll just have to see. And it's only uh-huh. it's le- it's less than a month away until election. Yeah. I can't believe it. Been following this election for I know a year it, it now. feels like it's been it feels like it's been years more than a year. It feels like I've been living this election. It's been going on. Well, we so have been, long. we have been living it. Okay, well, I mean, living it longer than a year. 
This has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490, The Owl Tahoe's Tahoe. Bye.